So I know that we just talked to you guys about not going back to corporate roles, but a lot has changed in the last week, and now I'm thinking about becoming a nurse. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but the media is reporting a lot of different staff shortages from nurses quitting. Hospitals aren't able to actually fill up those roles quickly enough again, so why wouldn't I jump into an industry that needs more people and has a lot of job stability? Or on the other hand, there's also been a lot of reports of pilot shortages too. I'm sure you guys have seen like the crazy flight delays going on right now, all like the travel horror stories in Canada, it's taking about five months to actually renew your passport. So maybe I could get into that industry too. Okay, so if you guys know us and if you've watched our videos before, then you definitely already knew that I wasn't being serious. Cause even though there are nurse and pilot shortages right now, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for me to jump into those professions. I got my university degree in commerce, specifically in human resources. Then I worked in HR for three years before working for myself, but then of course to work on this personal finance content. So even if I did want to go back to a job with an employer right now, it would make a lot more sense for me to go into an industry that I actually had the experience in. Like if I did want to become a nurse or a pilot right now, it's not like I would just get a job right away because there's a shortage. I'd still have to go back to school. I'd have to train. I'd have to break into the industry and make those connections. Overall, it doesn't make a lot of sense to even be talking about it. So why am I? Well, I have a funny story to tell you guys. So the other week I'm visiting my family and for some context here too, no one in my immediate family has done what Dan and I are doing. So basically becoming self-employed, working for ourselves, completely changing up our career paths pretty suddenly and drastically in their mind. So as much as I feel very supported and appreciated in that, my family's really great, it's all still pretty new to them. So the other week I'm at home, I'm talking to my grandma. Hi grandma, if you're watching this. Um, but we're talking a little bit about this stuff and all of a sudden she just brings up, hey, like maybe you should become a nurse. You know, there's this whole shortage right now. And obviously I was very taken aback and surprised by this because first of all, I have a job. We'd been talking about it. And also, like I just explained, that wouldn't really make a lot of sense for me. Then she kind of laughed at that, I guess, and continued to explain what she meant. You know, don't I want a steadier income right now when prices are up with inflation? Just don't I want that job stability and again, that steady income. I'm definitely paraphrasing a bit here, but that was kind of the overall message of what she was saying. And this definitely took me off guard and I was a little bit surprised, didn't have a lot to say in the moment, because there's a few things. One, even if you know people around you, people in your family might doubt or not be sure about the career path or just choices you're making in general, it's still pretty jarring to actually hear them say it so bluntly to you. So that was one thing. But on top of that, it was kind of funny that my career that I had before becoming self-employed just went out the window. You know, wouldn't it make sense that if I did want this steadier income, and secure a job or just obviously what she meant is having an employer. Even if I wanted that, wouldn't it make more sense for me to go back into the industry I had experience in, that I have connections in, that I have my degree in? It's kind of like that was just forgotten and instead I needed to get any new regular job. Now, after this conversation happened, I reminded myself that not everyone's gonna understand different career paths in general, right? And that's not even just gonna be specific to working for yourself or content creation or anything that Dan and I are doing. It could just be anything that's different from either what the family member in this case had done in their career path or if it's just completely different than what you had been doing before, right? But after I was home visiting my family for that weekend, once I got back and told Dennis all about it, it really got us thinking about job stability in general. And the fact that so many people have this perception that having an employer means that you're gonna have job stability and financial stability, when that's not automatically always the case. Okay, so that was a look into how we're feeling. And keep in mind, this is all during a time where we're seeing all these negative headlines. Like I'm, I'm pretty sure I read this morning that HBO laid off like 70% of their employees, right? And then there's also inflation. Even though, even though inflation is is high and is kind of coming back down we're still going to the grocery store and seeing all these high prices basically everything right now just just feels super scary uncertain all the above what's interesting though is that there's a lot of conversations that are being had right now on jobs and just job stability in general now we we actually saw this one article on LinkedIn. You know what? Actually, I think it was a TikTok that I saw. So I saw this TikTok and then Steph finally gave me the full backstory. But basically there was this article on Malcolm Gladwell. And for those of you guys who just don't know who he is, he's like this famous author. And basically what he said, he went viral for saying that he believes that people should go back to the office in order to feel some sort of sense of purpose in their work. And to give you guys the actual exact quote that he said was, you need to be in person, not in your pajamas, to feel like you're necessary and part of something bigger. Now, to me, this statement is just super funny and just really, really ironic. So once again, for those of you guys who don't know who Malcolm Gladwell is, he's a famous author who's written a whole bunch of books. And what's funny is that he's someone who has 
who himself doesn't work in an office. And he's also someone who's written about not wanting to work in an office, not liking office environments, and instead choosing to work from home or from coffee shops. What this shows me is that even someone who doesn't work in an office themselves somehow still believes that the traditional way of working is the best way for most people. And there's also this like weird urge to, you know, not push for change and also side with the company as, as opposed to the employee. Now, what you're gonna find even funnier is that basically what Malcolm is telling us is that going back to the office for most people is somehow gonna give them, you know, that mental wealth and that mental strength. Somehow they're gonna have more purpose within their job. They're gonna have more meaning when once again, that's not even, that's never what going to the office was built for in the first place. Having employees in the office is what employers thought was gonna be best for them. And you know, once again, like we totally get it. Like they gotta do what they gotta do. So that means that we gotta do what we gotta do, right? Now, trying to make the argument that working in the office is the best place for literally everyone, it's kind of a bit of a ridiculous argument, right? But we did see this one person who actually summed it up really, really well. They were writing about it. So check this. Basically what they said is, no employer in history of work ever thought, let's require people to come to the office because offices are so beneficial to their psyche. The argument was not, you should come into the office because you will feel better about yourself and your place in the universe, but you should come into the office because it's more efficient for your boss to know exactly where you are during the workday. So whether you're someone who actually likes being in an office or if you're someone who likes working from home, maybe a mix of both, I think we can all agree that everyone doesn't have to be in the office for us to have this like sense of meaning in life, right? What's, what's interesting is that right now we're in this period where employers do have some power because once again, none of us are trying to get fired. We're kind of in this like weird recessionary time, but there's also, we're also coming off of the tail end of employees having power as well. And what they're doing is they're demanding better working environments. So there's kind of this mix of both. Another thing that I've been thinking about for a while now that I think is pretty interesting when it comes to careers and specifically these traditional careers versus new career paths is that some people feel like everyone is self-employed. Now we talked about this in the channel a little bit before, specifically back when the great resignation was this big topic that everyone was talking about. And at the time, millions of people were leaving their jobs and a decent amount of those people were leaving the corporate world completely to instead work for themselves. And some people seem to hear the combination of millions and self-employed and literally started saying, oh my God, literally everyone's gonna be self-employed. I even remember listening to this podcast at the time and it wasn't even a careers or money focused podcast, just regular lifestyle one. And someone on the podcast mentioned, you know, who's gonna do all the real jobs, like building things, like running countries, if everyone's self-employed and if everyone's creating content. And what I thought was really funny about this is that in the US alone, only about 2% of people were actually quitting their jobs every month, which means that 98% of people weren't. So saying everyone's quitting their jobs is really not accurate. And it's kind of similar when we talk about the change in what kids say they wanna be when they grow up, right? Like I found this survey from 2019 and the results are that more kids are now saying that they wanna be YouTubers and vloggers. I think it was about a third of the kids that responded to the survey that are under 12 years old said that their top career aspiration, what they wanna be when they grow up is a YouTuber. Now, kids used to say things like a lawyer, a doctor, a vet, or apparently an astronaut used to be a big one, just jobs like that. And I even saw this myself when I was quitting my corporate job about a year ago. Someone on my team said that they mentioned to their kid, who's probably about 12 or under, and they told them that I was leaving my job and that I had a YouTube channel. And they thought that was pretty cool because they wanted to be a YouTuber when they grow up. What I actually found the most interesting about this was people's reactions and that a ton of people were saying that they thought it was sad that kids wanted to become YouTubers or creators right now. And I definitely had a few different thoughts about that. The first one mostly being that I really do think it's a plus that it opens up the conversation about entrepreneurship and being self-employed. Like if you look at those other careers that kids used to say they wanted to be, or even the other ones on the list, they aren't focused on entrepreneurship. And I know for me growing up, unless you had a family member or a family friend, something like that, someone in your life that was self-employed and taking an entrepreneurial path, then you didn't really know about it or think about it as an option for you. So I definitely think it's a plus that kids at a younger age know that that's an option too. Then I think the next argument from there that people have is saying, okay, if people are entrepreneurs, that's fine, but what if no one's as innovative anymore, right? What if everyone's just focused on entertainment? That's not a good thing. And I do think there is a conversation to be had there, but the other way that I like to look at it is the fact that this path of being online and a YouTuber, anything like that in the creator space is it's more accessible for people. And people have this option to actually build up some initial capital to then either go create other businesses, right? A lot of people start out online and then do something else and just in general have more resources to get started. And 
And then my main last argument for this that I think is a really good one is how many people even become the job that they say they wanted as a kid anyways, right? It just feels like everyone says that they wanna do this because it's new and different. But again, just like we were saying before, it's not everyone. Okay, so check this out. I'm gonna ask you guys a legit question. So what do these things have in common? So Steph's grandma telling her that she should become a nurse, Malcolm Gladwell telling literally everyone that they should just go back to the office and work from there. And for the people that are out here telling everyone, you know, if everyone quits their job, who's gonna work the real jobs? Well, honestly, I would say that it has a lot to do with this attachment to like what we know and what we've seen in the past. So it's this idea that the traditional way of working represents job stability. You know, it's kind of funny because people get really weird and just nervous when it comes to things that they just haven't seen in the past. And once again, like you're gonna see jobs change. You're gonna see technology coming at you really quickly. And I get it. I understand why you would feel weird about that. But what I will say is that the things that don't change and the things that do, do stay the same for the most part are economic cycles, right? So you're gonna see periods of economic growth, of recessions. You're gonna see periods of bear markets, bull markets. You're gonna see times that are up, times that are down. The main thing to keep in mind is your personal situation and your own job stability, right? Like, do you have an emergency fund? Do you have a plan to continue earning income should anything happen, should you lose your job? If you're self-employed, do you have a plan to keep that income consistent? You know, are you someone who's paying off your high interest rate debt? Are you investing for your future? All of these things are things to keep in mind regardless of what job you have. And once again, if you're someone who's in a more stable position, then that's amazing. All right, guys, so with that being said, that is a complete wrap on this video. Um, yeah, let us know if you, if you guys have any thoughts on job stability, if you have any thoughts on your own personal situation and with kind of the times that are coming up ahead. Um, with that being said, as usual, make sure you do like down below, make sure you subscribe. Once again, hopefully we didn't actually fool you guys with the thumbnail and, you know, Know, Steph becoming a nurse and that whole story. Hopefully you guys actually enjoyed the story about her and her grandma. I know when she told me that was like hilarious. So yeah, you know, make sure you like down below, subscribe as usual. And if you haven't seen any of our previous videos, you know the vibes. Make sure you check them out next. Door, door. We will be back. You know the vibes. Let's go. Mm -hmm.